We are Stephen and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show, we answer that and more. Stephen Jill here. Greetings. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about taking responsibility for your deal all the way through. This sounds like parenting. And Jill said right before we started the show, oh my God, what is it like that she does on every show? What is this about now? Okay. Where and are you so going with this? <laughs> here's, my, here's the concept. There are a lot of people, uh, especially young men, I know because I was one of them. Uh, you still are, babe. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> Why do women love that? Oh, I'm still young. No, no, no. Actually, I'm not young at all. Well, we. Well, I'm <laughs> gonna. Or I'm gonna fight on mine. I am. When I was a young man, I was famous for, uh, let's say, making the sale. Uh, in the terms of in terms of how we do it here, uh, famous for like getting a signed purchase agreement. So I got all the stuff done. Signed purchase agreement done. I'm done. That's it. I'm not going to follow through on anything. I got that little high that I was looking for, uh, you know, that little kind of like uh, that that rush. I guess it's probably an adrenaline rush, mm -hmm. that sales adrenaline rush. And I shoved it all off on everybody else, whoever was uh, the deal. I would shove the deal on whoever was working with me or when I was in commercial real estate, I would shove it off on, the, on a lawyer or a closing agent or whatever. And I was moving on. So that may have been, may or may not have been appropriate then. Probably was a lot more appropriate back then because it was just before the internet. So everything was on paper, and it, and every job was kind of segregated or separate. You know, my skill was to get that signed purchase agreement. That's just not the case anymore. You, this is you can be a one man show, but you got to follow through. And so that's kind of what the show's about here. Thank you. Before we get into it, <laughs> let's take a question posted by one of our members on the LandInvestors.com online community. It's free. Leonard wrote, hey, land investors, I recently bought 30 lots from a tax sale from the commissioner of the state of lands in Arkansas. I had the intention of selling each lot on eBay. I got a lot of bids on each auction, and then I listed five properties on eBay in total. However, after the auctions ended, the buyers asked a lot of questions, such as parcel boundaries, whether the property was marked and wanted to pay in person or even refused to pay. I had one bidder on multiple on my properties and then refused to pay. eBay is charging me a listing fee and a notice fee for $85 per property listed. I can help with this. Yes. Which they won't refund for non-payment. My questions are this. One, is there anything I'm missing here when I'm listing my properties on eBay? And then two, how do you find buyers for these cheaper properties? I have listed them on Facebook, Marketplace, and a lot of had a lot of interested potential buyers but they seem to be uh, tire kickers. How do you sell these properties? So before Jill answers, because she's very, uh, you know, very knowledgeable on this topic, for years and years and years, probably up to around 2010 or 12-ish, uh, I don't know, some number like that, doesn't matter. Jill and I had an eBay company like this, and we still do to some degree. Uh, it's much way scaled down now, but I used to go buy property. That, I put this topic in here. I put this question in here because it's kind of the, like this topic. Mm -hmm. My job was to go bring in these, buy these properties real cheap and then kind of uh, walk away <laughs> <laughs> and then say, here you go <laughs> and post them on eBay with some help uh, with a couple of people in between us. And then Joe would handle it from there. Right. So, and there's a lot of stuff involved. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, great, I bought it for uh, 10 cents. I'm going to sell it for a dollar mm -hmm. and not, and expect that to happen. Right. This is one of the things that we've talked about a lot about eBay. eBay from when it first started to what it's grown to today is very different. When it first started, I think it was exciting and good, and and I don't I don't think that that there were as many issues as there are now. And I've had everything from my four year old got my computer and bid on the property. I'm not kidding. To just people going dark, like maybe what happened here with you, Leonard. So unfortunately, there is a, a percentage, and it's not a five percent. It's usually higher percentage, uh, but it does vary. Like we've had a good run last couple months. But, um, you know, every week there's always a one-off kind of thing. There's something. So, but you have to plan for that. Now, here's what you do. The, the post, there's a posting fee of traditionally $50. And there's a closing fee when the bid ends, traditionally $35. Um, I think I have those correct. I got to, but. Yeah, you do. You have the two. And then it adds up to $85. And that's one of the great things too about eBay with property 
some of the eBay product types, you pay a percentage of the sale that goes to eBay. This is just a flat rate fee when, when you post it and when it closes. Now, if they don't pay, it doesn't technically sell, you can, you can repost a property and you can ask to get, I think, the $35 closing fee back because it didn't really happen. But before you do that, I would always suggest, too, there's always a list of bidders. I hope you can do If you do it fast enough and you find out quick enough that the guy's going to walk, you know, say, say you're bidding, uh, you're posting clothes on a Sunday. It's Monday morning. The guy says, I'm out. Whatever reason, my wife found out I'm in the doghouse. I've had that. You know, you could quickly go to the number two on the list and go, congratulations. Hey, you were the second bidder. The first guy had a, has having marital problems. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you're not lying. <laughs> Do you want the property? I'll give it to you at your highest bid, but we got to do it today. And here's the information. So that's that's my first thing. If all else fails and doesn't work, don't go three, four down the list because they've moved on by then. I, I've I've found in my experience, they when they didn't get your property and they saw the little bidding war going on, they bowed out and they probably looked at some other property and and bought that. But uh, you can always repost it. That's not crazy. I also put things in there, you know, really clear in our postings that by bidding on this property, you know, please do all your due diligence ahead of time. The reason we have it up here for 30 days is to give you time to do that. You are expected to pay within 48 hours of the auction closing. Here are the payments we accept. You know, I give them, it's all spelled out. So there's no questions. They can't come back with anything that has helped also too. And then for, at the end of the day, how am I going to sell these properties? Say, you know, I put them everywhere. I, one of the things I'm wondering, Leonard, is, and it sounds like this is true, it's only on eBay. Put it on your website. Put it on social media. Put it on Instagram. Put it on Craigslist. Do all of the above like you would any normal property. It just happens to be a very inexpensive one. This is probably a $1,000 property. It's probably something you bought for 100 bucks, and you want to sell it. And now you're all in for 150 with eBay fees because it failed on one. So, you know, and you're trying to sell it for a thousand. That's great margins. And you just need to get it out there in front of the right person. Anyway, yeah. I could, I could write a book on called, uh, how to sell real vacant land on eBay. Yeah. I really could. And maybe be one of the five people in the world qualified to do this. Jill yeah. and I could. Here's some bullet points though. So you don't have to read the book and I don't have to write it. Number one, uh, the vast majority of the problems on the sell side, when you do a $1, no reserve 30 day auction, which is what you should always do with real estate are going to come from bidders with less than a five feedback. In fact, the vast majority of those are going to be zero or one. So you can watch that. You can watch who's bidding on it. And with their feedback super, super low, you can you can uh, terminate them as a bidder. Let me go and take it a step further. I forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me. You can go into your settings and keep them from bidding. Right. You, we have done that too. I have people that I blocked and I, and I can say, I only want people that have this amount of feedback and or, you know, any kind of a purchase history, uh, the type of feedback that they have, the transactions they've done, you can limit all of that. So thank you for adding that. It's perfect. Well, point oh, number God. two, uh, in the thousands of properties that we have sold, I will tell you, when you look at all of them and you take out Christmas, you take up all the variables. You take out large properties, small properties, properties from different states, on and on and on. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to double your money. You buy a property for 500 bucks, you're going to sell it for 1000 uh, and you might win some, you might lose some, but that's just how it is. Number bullet point number three, you have to buy real estate as cheap as you could possibly imagine to sell it on eBay. So if you're buying regular properties somewhere for a thousand dollars and you're selling them, like Jill suggested somewhere else on Facebook, on your website, through other channels, and you're selling them for five grand and you're happily going along, you probably have to buy those properties for $500 and sell them for a thousand on in an eBay environment, uh, which is not as hard as it sounds because, and this is like the theme of our all of land Academy, buy the stuff cheap. If you buy it super cheap stuff uh, solves itself. Here's the good news. Bullet point number four, when you list a $1, no reserve property on eBay for 30 days and it closes, there's about a 50 to 60% chance, in my opinion, you're going to get paid immediately and the transaction is going to go great. You're taking sales out of, out of your life. You know what's going to happen. You're ensuring cash flow. You can sit there and say, I'm going to post 10 properties this week. In 30 days, 10 properties are going to close, five or six of them. I'm going to get the money on. The other four, 
or five or four, uh, I'm going to relist immediately. Uh, I'm going to collect my, put my notice in for my final value fee. It's, yeah, it's going to cost me 50 bucks. So what? That's, uh, so that's a, there's a, really for me, that's always been, wow, I'm going to sleep at night now because I just know what's going to happen. So it's, you know, it's a great business. It's a fantastic business, especially if you've got somebody on your team who is not bothered by these things and, and planning for it. So Leonard here is asking these questions like he's in it and you can hear the undertones. What he's saying is what the hell? Yeah. Well, hopefully by listening to this, we're going to dispel your disappointment. Half the people are going to pay. Uh, they're all going to have questions at the end. You could, there's a lot of stuff you can do to control it, but not entirely, but man, you know, you're going to make some money. Mm -hmm. Unlike every other product on eBay, including cars, I've tried, I did a whole car model, total, totally failed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so it can be a great business model. Uh, it is for us. We have property on eBay now and, and continue to, to sell property there. Today's topic, taking resp uh, responsibility for your deal all the way to the end. This is the meat of the show. I was going to add something about this real quick about the taking responsibility, not add. I would like to talk about the topic <laughs> real quick. I think it's different for men and women, I have to say. I so do also. So I, you're talking about, you know, you do the deal and you just hand it over. Most women can't. Maybe because we're used to doing all the, we're used to doing this stuff. You know, it's kind of funny. I was just, as you're describing it in the intro, I'm like, I don't have that problem. You know, I had the opposite problem for a long time. I couldn't give well, up the not, responsibility. It hasn't gone away. Oh, yeah. Because I know no one would do it right or wouldn't get, or, you know, or at least the way I wanted. And I had to get past that. So I had to learn to train people to do it right. That's number one. And then if they don't do it exactly the way I wanted, that's okay. You know, doing it their best, but still within my, my guidelines is good enough. I was watching this. This is totally, well, it's a little bit related. I was watching a, a show on Netflix, like binge watching a show where it's all about criminals and murder and stuff. And so they had this one person who um, was committing these murders and they were cleaning up after themselves, like completely cleaning this crime scene, not to hide it, just because it ended up being a woman and she just didn't want to leave a mess for someone else, yeah. <laughs> that's, which is what we're talking exactly. about. Exactly. So please don't be one of these people. Uh, again, I don't want to pick on young, young men. I feel like I can because I used to be one. Young men just tend to like burn through stuff, bull in a china shop. Just barrel through stuff and expect someone else to close their deal. You see it with real estate agents a lot where everybody, they got the contracts all signed. They lined up a lender. They, they gave a bunch, everybody some stuff to do. They threw all the paperwork at a uh, title agent and they walked away uh, with the, you know, wringing their hands saying, I did my job. And that's not, the deal's not closed at all. Uh, in fact, the work just really gets started. I see this a lot too with contractors and I, you know, I'm not picking on contractors or anybody else for that matter, but most contractors are men and they just make a huge mess. So whatever they're fixing, they're focused on fixing something or building something and not about the actual end result and how it looks. Like the framers are like this. They'll just go in and frame the heck out of a building like in a day out of a house. And it's just a bloody mess everywhere. Even finished carpenters. We, Jill and I did a project once and I was, just, I was constantly just laughing. We should have filmed it back then about how much of a mess everything was. Mm -hmm. So what so, do you, yeah, go ahead. So my point is, and Jill talked about this, here's my point to this whole thing. All, all the guys, all the people uh, in our advanced group don't have this problem. They all take this, they, they're on the phone constantly. Uh, and if anything goes sideways, they take personal responsibility for it. That's the key here. You have to take personal responsibility for getting that check at the end of a transaction and it's and no one else is going to do it. Not your mommy, not your sister, and not your, certainly not your secretary or anybody else. And cert, hopefully not your business partner, unless you sit down and say, "Look, you clearly enjoy doing paperwork, and I clearly enjoy being the master." Which is ridiculous when you think about it. Uh, it should be fifty-fifty. So you just you're going to have to. It's going to take if you're a young man, you're just going to have to take some adjustment. Well, what steps? Are there are steps I can take, like therapy. Uh, well, just what about just making, making yourself aware of it. All right. I think that's that's like probably 80% of it. Okay. Or maybe if enough deals don't close because of whoever you're shoving this stuff off on is just kind of putting their middle finger up at you. Don't blame them. Yeah. There you go. I think that's, you know, 
then it's like, you're either at that point, you're either going to say, wow, I really actually do have to pay attention to detail. You know, the devil is in the details. That's absolutely true here. Right. You're either going to pay attention to that stuff or you're going to say, I'm going to go off and do go put myself in another environment, like selling vacuum cleaners or something where someone else after I close the deal, someone else does a fulfillment part. There's there's a there's a there is a um, there's two parts here. Let's just say, OK, you have a team. All right. But you're, it's your deal. You got to take responsibility. Say I'm I'm um, I am a one. I was a one man show and I hired an assistant now. And I'm I see this is where it could go. all go sideways really fast because if you're a one man show, you have to take responsibility. No one's no foods on the table if you don't. So check. We're not worried about that. <laughs> but you just hire an assistant and they work part time with you at your dining room table, you know, in the afternoons, Monday through Friday. And all you do is shove paper to them. Right. And if the deals aren't getting done, things are getting closed, things are getting posted, you know, f first you have to take responsibility, I think, yourself to make sure that you train them the right way. And it's not fair if you really set them up to fail. Um, you really, I, I personally, um, you know, am big on let's do them together. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. You got this part. You got this part. And then eventually they're riding their bike themselves and they don't need me holding the back seat. So that's that's kind of how how I like to do it how I, I see it. But there's also a point where you have to let go. They have to take that. And you have to be, you have to, as you, the owner and the boss here, you got to gauge either I'm doing, I overtrain them. I didn't train them right. Or they're not the right person. That can happen too. And you got to figure that out. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, training is an important, important part of it. Uh, but I really do think that you, in the end, you got to take responsibility for it. Right. Because, you know, and I'll tell you, I'm just thinking about we have, we've over the years have had several. We still do have several companies, but we've had of all the different kinds of companies and the employees and things we've had over the years. Finding that um, one stellar person, if you think that it's really easy to find someone that I don't have to train them, I'm just going <laughs> to, you know, the right guy is going to come along. And he's going to know what to do. Good luck. That's yeah. very, very hard to find. So I want you to, I don't want to set you up for disappointment. I want you to know that it's hard to find. And if you do find that, don't let them go. Number one, I was thinking about that today as actually I was driving, I was driving back from an appointment this morning before this. And I'm thinking about my team and I'm like, wow, we've got a few people on my team that they don't need that. And I yeah. want to make sure that they are happy. They are happy. I, I ask know. them all the time. I'm like, they, they just naturally fall into that role. Right. Well, it didn't we, happen in two days. Well, it's because, too, we do take care of them. And I always want to make sure that, God, am I taking care of that person enough? Make sure they feel good and appreciated because um, they they figure stuff out. That weeds, it seems to weed itself out. Good. Anyway, see your deal all the way to the end and make a ton of money. That's, that's going to be the result of that. And it might require you thinking out of the box and making some personal changes. I know I had to. Happy you could join us today. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we are right here on the Land Academy Show. Tuesdays and Thursdays, you can find us on the House Academy Show. Tomorrow, the episode on the House Academy Show is called Success in Anything Requires Obsession. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. What do you mean well, obsession? That's one thing you're good at. Being obsessed? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I strain, like, you're really I good at that. I strangely take that as a compliment. I know. Like if somebody on the street walked up to me and said, you're obsessed, I would say, thank you. Yeah, I know. But there's a lot, you know, and I think a lot of people probably wouldn't. That's not nice. We'll explain more tomorrow. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Land Academy show remains commercial free for you, our loyal listener. So wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, please subscribe and rate us there. We, we are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information. And inspiration. To buy undervalued property.